We're going to be jumping into this TVP now with Nyokin versus Dragon. Nyokin over here in the top left. Dragon in the top right on Radeon once again. This map for PVT has been a little bit rough for the Terran so far in this tournament, don't you think? Well, yeah, I think from the games we've seen anyway. Um, though, to be fair, Dragon, one of the stronger players uh, maybe in the tournament lineup and with a good, with very good PvP as well, I would say he's one of the more stronger contenders to take it all the way. I'd still favor Hawk probably, probably over him, but yeah, I'd say he has a good fighting chance in this tournament yeah. with a good strong mirror matchup as well. There's like a, not many people you can't beat. And of course, Nyokin, our fellow caster, he does a lot of work with uh, Starcast TV. Has a great casting style and uh, a lot of knowledge. Very, very knowledgeable Terran player. Spent a lot of time in Korea. And grew up in America, I believe. Is that correct? I think so. Now I can spawn bread in the US, yeah. And we'll see what he has to bring out here against Dragon. I'm not sure what kind of shape either of these players are in right now, but... In TVP, the matchup hasn't changed too much recently. It's been mostly down to uh, masses of shuttles and crazy Reaver micro and Reaver aggression in the early game. And we're not going to go for a 12th Nexus here or anything crazy. Just a very normal play. Very standard and uh, safe play here to start out this series for Dragon. Yeah, I'm curious if he'll see like a 23 Nexus or he'll do two gate obs into um, Robo and then go straight into Reavers to slow down anything that Nyokin can do. And with the, the natural expansions being so close together on this map, I guess the, the Reaver is even more potent here. Yeah, it's a very short uh, flight distance from natural to natural on this map. And as you can see, the naturals are very long and choked up it's a, it's a small area here to move through putting down a reaver out here slowing down the uh, moving forward of tank and vulture as you're trying to take your third is a very effective strategy for the protoss so even just coming across you know getting a little damage and keeping that reaver alive is going to be very valuable uh just focusing on using that for not only harass but slowing down the push a little later on Knight can kept uh, one on gas as well, so he he wants to probably do some fast tech play here and maybe get machine chop after just one vulture. Got that first vulture gonna pop, pop out. The vulture expand build has been a really strong addition to the Terran arsenal against Protoss players in the modern age. We're gonna have that machine shop. As you said, SCV gonna survive here. Taking this Dragoon on a round-the-world trip all the way to the bottom right-hand corner. Looks like it does finally get picked off, but buying that time for the Vulture to slip out here on the map. And it could find, you know, an option to slide into that main base at some point. So Dragon going to have to keep at least one Dragoon back at home just to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, this one vulture being out on the map is so important for Terran. It's not so much that you want it to lay mines. It's also the fact that you just want the Protoss player to not get like all these Dragoons across the map pressuring your bunker for free. So it allows you to be really uh, nice and safe, not have to worry about any like ranged Dragoons hitting your bunker, having to cost a bit of a repair bill while you're waiting for the tank to come online. Nothing like that. He's instead going to have to be much more careful is Dragon, keeping at least one Dragoon back at home, making sure there's no run by potential. We don't have that pile on wall just yet, but... Uh... Rope transfer going to make its way here to the natural dragon's dragoon. Just going to sit here and can always retreat to that ramp if necessary. And I don't think we're going to see any sort of run by here. Now just leaving this out on the map in kind of a weird position, not somewhere that you're likely to scout with the dragoon and waiting on that mine upgrade to finish before he sends that over to start dropping mines in some of the locations where Dragon's going to want to take that third base. Double gateway here in the main. Just very standard, very safe play here from Dragon. And we should see uh, Reaver play here. And if not, a third gateway is also a good way to play. Just having overwhelming Dragoons to stop any sort of aggression out of Nyokin. I don't think that that's what Nyokin's going for. 
But there, just as I say it, he pops all of his Marines out of the bunker and sends his army across the map to tank push. Wasn't really continuing to build Marines, so I wasn't expecting this, but four Marines can still tank a lot of Dragoon shots. We'll see what kind of damage he can get done. I doubt this is for a full committal. Maybe just getting mines up here right in front of the natural is his plan right now. Here we go. Jumping in to the natural. That's a lot of dragoons. He sees the number here and he will just back away. And that's a pretty quick observer. So he's easily going to be able to clear out these mines. Now, if these tanks get stuck at all on the retreat, you could end up seeing those go down. But dragon not going to chase that. And Nyokin just going to back away for free. So kind of a funny little push out there. Instant regret. He turns around and heads back home. I think it was a greedy play out of Dragon where he tried to go to one gate tech or tried to get a very fast third here or cut his Dragoon production for whatever reason. He only had four Dragoons. Then, of course, maybe Nyokin could have done something there. But with that many Dragoons uh, showed up, six is like basically what the Protoss should have of two gate ops production. It's just a little bit too much to, to break there for Nyokin. So going to be turning away after that uh, failed opportunity to find some kind of damage. It does kill the probe going to the third base, though, so it slows down the, the third Nexus timing, at least. Yeah, he gets in there. At least getting a small bit of damage, a small bit of delay here. You can see that Dragon has quite a bit of money banked up and ready to throw down that Nexus. He's going to go to four gate here with a Citadel on the way. So skipping right over that Reaver tech, he's going to get into a Citadel. He's going to get into... Speed, or will this be for a really fast storm, do you think? I, I think, giving that as Dragon, I imagine it's going to be Gateway Man with Storm. I mean, I, I, everything I've seen of him, I haven't seen a lot of his PVTs, but I imagine that's what he is going for here. Yeah, If he's not going for Reavers, it's definitely going to be Gateway Man with Storm. Well, we talked earlier about the, the distance between the Naturals here. Very, very close. Could be easy to get a Storm drop off here really early on. Um, hard for the Terran player to really negate that. If you don't go for like Wraith play or something like that, it's going to be almost impossible to stop. Getting into his armories here. We don't see a starport just yet. Four factory though. I think this looks, this is looking like just four factory into a third base. Uh, what yeah. do you feel? I think this is good though, and he's also delayed his academy for so long. He only made it, his academy like an eight minute academy, so it's like he managed to get all the way up to like 48 SCVs before even starting to produce uh, these commsats. So he's got a very healthy economy behind this. He's not had to cut anything, so it's like an ideal situation for Terran to get away of not having to make that academy for as long as possible. It's basically three options of tech, which is the academy, the armory, and the engineering bay, and slowing those down for as long as you can can really help you out optimize the Terran player. So we're gonna get in here, maybe catch some probes on the transfer. Getting just one probe here, and the transfer will complete. Ooh, one mine connection, getting a dragoon. That makes everything that was just uh, all the vultures that just went down to completely worth for just one probe and a dragoon. You'll definitely take that trade. It's gonna try and run by again here. No, not going to happen. And what do we have? Command center in the main. Up to five factory now. Is it time to grab a starport? We're almost, we're past the halfway mark here on this armory. If we don't get a starport now, we're not going to be able to continue those upgrades uh, or continue the, the attack upgrade when that armory uh, completes, when that upgrade completes. But maybe that's not the plan here. Maybe the plan is to set up this turret ring and get this third base as quickly as possible before getting into those next levels of upgrades. There's the starport. Never mind. Yeah, he might um, throw down a second army for the weapons upgrade and go armor first. I'm not sure how he wants to optimize his mineral spendage. He might even just not make the armor upgrade at all and just wait for that to come online. But he might go armor and then make a second armory. And it's looking like from Dragon here, he might be thinking about busting this third base as it comes down. It's quite a wide choke here. Plus, you've got this area to kind of backstab through. It's a little bit difficult to set up an impenetrable uh, spot here. Five factories should allow you to do it. Getting a lot of mines out here. Maybe a few turrets as well. Big spread of tanks in order to get your third base online. But with just three bases and this much production from dragon he's gonna be able to field a huge army now there is a templar archives coming and a sargate at the same time which definitely points us towards 
Arbiter play? Look at that. He's not mining completely on this gas. That's a little bit unfortunate mm. for Dragon here. Only two on gas in the main. That might actually hurt him going forward. You know, he won't have as many Templar. He won't have the Arbiter timing that he would be looking for. He has an extra 100 gas a minute that he's currently not utilizing. So, yeah, the longer this game progresses, like three or so minutes, that's an entire Arbiter worth of gas just, just not being mined there. So a little bit unfortunate if he doesn't notice that. I've got this shuttle out. Could maybe do some damage to the economic prowess of Nikon right now, sitting on 56 SUVs to 62 pros. It's actually quite Terran favored, although the supplies do seem quite normal. Ooh, these Goliaths are going to come out. Maybe pick off this shuttle. He's going to drop out the Zealots. Buy himself some time. He does manage to get away there. But a nice move from Nyokin. If he had Charon boosters there, he might have just killed that shuttle. Now setting up here. I don't know. That we, we really need to spread these tanks. I feel like Dragon is going to hit this very, very hard. Very, very soon. With a lot of Zealots popping out right now. Templar coming. We got to have this perfectly set up before the attack comes in. And you do not want to be clumping your tanks right now because Storm is going to be available very soon. Yeah, uh, Dragon might wait uh, quite a while before going in here just because of how turtled up Noikin is. We may even wait all the way until stasis or recall is available. So maybe a 13 minute, 14 minute timing here from Dragon. Just going to be taking a fourth base, setting up to take a fifth as well in the bottom right quadrant of the map. Meanwhile, Noikin going to have to try and some, get some map control with these vultures out. Try and see if he can identify where the army of Dragon is so he can have a little push timing here. Because if he can isolate the Protoss army and force them into a head-on engagement, Storm's only just now finished. There's no Arbiters out on the map just yet. So it's not really a big tech advantage for Dragon to utilize. And he can got enough units here to soak up these Zealots as well. That he can just take a lot of terrain away from Dragon for free here and siege up just outside his rally point. Could put a lot of pressure from Dragon, but there's some units still in the center of the map could be coming in for a flank and kill all these tanks. Oh my gosh, oh, sieging up, up way too clumped. No, Nyokin. I don't know about this attack, brother. Coming in like this didn't seem like a good idea to me, and stacking up the tanks, definitely a bad decision. Looks like at the same time, Reaver being dropped over here at the third. Naokin getting a little bit antsy and just going for an attack here that really is not going to work out well for him. He's lost a lot of SCVs, and not as many as I thought. Still sitting here at 58. Will stop this drop, but now can he stop the the attack that's coming his way? There's a lot of zealots being made right now. It hasn't been any super greed coming out of Dragon this game. He's been pretty slow at taking his expansions and really amping up his gateway count very, very quickly. So he's got a lot of units to work with, and there's really not many tanks left for Nyok. And can he hold on right now to these three bases? Yes, the curse of Terrans across the globe here. Just you, They're so good at building up these big armies, but not so good at controlling them and identifying exactly where the Protoss is hanging out with the scans ahead of time. And kind of just got caught with his pants down there and look, had his whole siege tank count completely reset. And now Dragon will be back into the driver's seat, remaxing once more. Noken is throwing down more and more factories, though, going up to eight factories, probably to about only 10 or so gateways of uh, dragons so there will be a small window here where you can catch up in supply but eventually once dragon gets control of this uh, bottom right quadrant on the map and sets up with a rally point it's gonna be a, a bit of a problem for Noikin. so he's got a small vulture raiding party coming out down here to see if he can find some probes or do some damage here yeah he's gonna at least prevent some of these cannons from finishing up and he's not gonna be able to catch any probes here four cannons over at this fourth base is enough to repel these vultures uh, pretty handily there's also that pylon wall here at the third so dragon is crossing all the the t's here making sure that he's got the defenses ready and i want to see now oh probe transfer oh he's gonna catch that right in the middle of the map very nicely done picking off quite a few probes there another round of probes is making its way over here on the right hand side that's gonna be blocked it's gonna be uh protected here by some dragoons but maybe Nyokin can wrap around and catch the rest of the, these probes the vultures are very very fast and he will just barely catch the tail end of this transfer killing off a couple more probes here only allowing four down to that bottom base and gonna catch some dragoons here as well these are all great pickoffs for Nyokin but still the problem remains fighting this giant army here of Dragon is going to be a real problem if you're not splitting your units correctly. He's going to have to take a very nice slow uh, push across the map. 
make sure that everything is spread properly otherwise we're gonna get absolutely ev eviscerated by these uh stasis and storms that are gonna be coming here a lot of tech on the field right now for dragon Absolutely. As you say that, EMP just finished up. We have a vessel out on the field. So with one good EMP, maybe he can really get a big tempo swing in these fights. If he can find and find the connection there on some high Templars or the Arbiters. Uh, yeah, right now he has a very powerful army. If you can just force Dragon to fight him head on, he will be able to win as long as his tanks are spread out enough. But it's very difficult to come out onto the map here as Terran and force the Protoss to engage just the way you would like to. They'll always find a way of uh, pulling you around out of position, waiting for you to be at your most weakest, and then finally pounce on you. So very difficult to achieve that, even though technically on paper you can just crush the Protoss here. It's like Dragon just getting into a huge macro now more gateways being thrown down in the bottom right and this is where Protoss starts to get really scary when they have these extra rally points when they have uh, arbiters everywhere and plenty of them to continuously cast tons of abilities and storms Nyokin, he needs to make some sort of move here and he's getting ready to do so i think he's going to try and take this space yeah. while moving towards the center of the map and controlling the area but he needs to be very, very careful with his first move out here, or his second move out, excuse me. Yeah, well, he's learning his lesson. He's scanning ahead of time, trying to figure out where all these pockets of units of Dragon are. He, like you say, he's going to expand to this 12 o'clock while pushing along the horizontal axis, attacking and defending at the same time. There's so many Arbiters out in the field. We do have some vessels to launch. MPs are now clumped up all these units. All right, a beautiful MP on the top two Arbiters. They're going to stop any stasis on those massive clumps of units. But now, Zealot, uh, Dragon still uh, in hot pursuit with these Zealot Goon forces, just raining down onto with the infantry, trying to get on top of these tanks. Beautiful stasis on the left-hand flank there. So many tanks just got swallowed up by that stasis. Not much DPS left on the field. A bit, of, a bit of a rally point coming out from the west, though, to try and help clean up the remainder of these forces. Nice storm on the right-hand side, reducing two of those tanks um, desperately down low HP. We'll have to face drop the shots, finishing them off. And now, looks like a beautiful trade here for Dragon. He's reset all the tank count. So far, no, he can currently head in supply. Maybe there's a small timing window here when you put the pressure on. We also see weapons upgrade being researched for Dragon for air, so maybe eventually wants to transition to carriers in the super late game. Might as well. Might as well get that. You do have these two Stargates already. All you need is a Fleet Beacon and you can begin the transition. Looks like as a result, after taking that fight, we're going to have Nyokin take a base here. Just bunkering down. I don't want to see him push right now. Just bunkering down here in the middle of the map and cutting off these different lanes is going to be very powerful. Dragon remaking his army here, bursting up in supply. And actually, Nyokin pushing forward, he gets a great EMP there. I'm not sure if these were the two Arbiters that were EMP'd earlier. It seems like we have Arbiters around that still have high energy. So a little bit worried about that, but that was a great EMP there. The and Dragon might recall onto his 12 o'clock position right now. Yeah, it looks like he will. Quick recall here. Going to be emptying out this base. Nyokin immediately pushing forward, though. He will be able to save, I think, the CC. No, he's not pulling the CC down. He really needs to pull the CC away from these Dragoons if he wanted to save it, but he won't be able to. Instead, he's just going to push here right for the natural. I think this is a great tactical move from Dragon to pick off the income, to slow down the income of the Terran player. And he already has the second rally over there at the bottom right. This is a, a dangerous situation, but I think it's a it pretty well controlled here by Dragon. Nyokin pushing into this natural... He can just let this go. Maybe he can get an EMP on these two Arbiters in the main base, though. Yeah, high templates from, from the high ground will be the, the issue for him to contend with. That's why we see these tanks are spread out as best as he can with the amount of actions he's got to uh, commit to right now. There's so many things he has to do. He has to macro, he has to you know, get his rallies across the map. He's making expansion on the bottom left. He's, as he's growing as a Terran, which is really important. You always want to grow. If, you, if you're not growing, you better be finishing the game because otherwise you're going to stagnate and just eventually whittle out and die. So we do see Nike be very active out on the map, both economically and with his uh, tactical decisions using his units here. But with this bottom right rally point, um, already churning away units. We have some Zealots moving out onto the map as well, putting some pressure on, slowing down this expansion in the bottom left quadrant while he's getting on top of this uh, northeast production and trying to contain all of these Terran units and gateways. But I think Dragon's got just barely enough production outside of this contain that he could put a little bit of pressure on here to Nyokin and stop him from rallying this uh, push too much here. So there is some potential here for Dragon to break out and be okay, but yeah, I don't know. I still feel like Nyokin's did a good job of getting on top of this production. There's not that many gateways in the bottom right. We do not have any kind of carrier switch on the way or anything. So as long as he can like EMP a few Arbiters here and keep this push going slowly but surely, maybe he can build down uh, Dragon just barely enough to take control of this game. 
I don't really like pushing into the main base right now. This is um, this is how a lot of Terran players end up dying. I would much rather see him take out this base. Uh, maybe rotate back, take over this again after killing off the natural and you know cutting off this area here. Bring the army up and actually uh, you know continue to grow, like you said. Having this base down here in the bottom left is nice, but we could see a recall there. That would shut down the economy, and there's almost nothing left at the third right now. Yeah, I mean, these, these Arbiters actually don't have much energy on them, though, so there's no, like, threat of any recalls right now, because I, I think there's only one Arbiter out on the map that has any kind of energy, that one there. Um, so there is still a possibility of a recall happening soon, but right now it's just a, a ground infantry coming all the way over to this left-hand side. There's a lot of mines over here, but not really any tanks, so we'll be able to do a lot. Oh, look, we got these two Arbiters high energy outside the 12 o'clock position. Maybe able to go into the Terran main base, recall into there, and then Stasis on the ramp as well, and cut off the head of the, the head of the, um, the other kind of dragon, the Terran dragon, and there's then only one dragon remaining, and he'll bring Supreme, we'll be able to hoard all of the money on the map for himself. Yeah, sitting on a hoard of gold, not quite yet anymore. Dragon starting to mine out a little bit himself, but he's got a lot of bases left on the map. Not the same can be said for Nyokin. He's struggling to mine anywhere right now. He's going to lose these tanks down here, pulling all the SCVs away. This is exactly what Dragon wants. He's losing his main base, but he's got plenty of production down here. He's still got plenty of Arbiters as well. So, I mean... This is this is fine for Dragon. He is he's feeling he's feeling just fine right now. He's gonna be able to come up here and try to take this base, but like we said before, two arbiters right there, ready to dive upon this. Looks like one one dragoon gonna pop out there. That's uh that's a little bit funny. That was an interesting drop. But um yeah, this is this is just gonna be shut down once again. And we've got almost no mining left here. Nyokin has to get this online. He has to get over here with a vessel and shut this down but there it is here's the recall recalling everything on top of this another arbiter comes out with this as well looks like he will be able to hold for now but more recalls are going to come down uh, almost certainly here in the next couple of minutes a couple of seconds are we going to have a recall no we've only got 100 energy here enough for a stasis but we do have another recall energy arbiter just above this position is he going to come in? He's waiting for another rally. There's that rally. As soon as he comes down here and recalls this, things are going to get really messy for Nyokin. Yeah, it's really cheeky what Dragon just did. He was waiting until the last possible second for his Arbiter to die. Then he stasis the tanks, and now he's going to come in for the recall. So there's a maximum duration on this stasis, those three tanks. They just stasis. The other two stasis units are going to come unstasis in the next, like, 10, 20 seconds. So we can still kill those once they become unstasis. And now he can maybe get a kill on this CC as well. It's really frustrating because he recalled another Arbiter, so he can stasis more and more tanks. Now these other two stasis units come unstasis. He can kill those and also trade well with these uh, four Goli three Goliaths that are on the low ground as well. So really cost efficient trades for Dragon Growth Board. Currently racing ahead in supply, about 30 or so supply ahead, and the SVs are dying very quickly as well so if this cc goes down i really do feel like dragon's completely in the driver's seat now yeah another cc coming up here kind of funny maybe he comes up and takes this base not a lot of money over here actually just a little bit funny that he decided to send the uh, command center up here uh the second one maybe uh, predicting that this one was gonna die pull this down oh my goodness he's not gonna pull it down until way too late and I think that CC is going to die. So, actually, lucky. Luckily, he did send the second CC. Oh, wait a second. Oh, he's just barely going to hold it. Wow, he just keeps it alive. Just barely. EMP goes down. We don't have any more Arbiters, do we? Where are, where are all the Arbiters? He's rebuilding his tribunal. He wasn't able to produce any more during this time. There's one Arbiter left. So, he hasn't been able to build any. There's one Arbiter with a lot of energy. And we need to get this base online, Nyokin. Why are we attacking right now? Just set up and try to survive here. Survival is number one priority. I guess he can kill this base for free. We don't really have anything on the map right now for Dragon. He's going to send out all of his units right now. He's a 40 supply ahead, so he should be able to save that. Nyokin should be able to get this online as well. That, that's that got to be a, the thing, right? Oh, he uses his EMP there on that very low... Uh, energy arbiter unfortunately that other arbiter it's got to be heading out on the on the map now i lost track of it there it is he really needs an emp for this one specifically You're gonna save this base and kill off a bunch of tanks oh my gosh Nyokin really funneling into this area he doesn't have the scan here either where's the scan there we go he doesn't Ooh. have the scan he, he 
He uh, stasis the vessel. He lifted off all of his CCs. He doesn't have any scan left. Oh man. Oh, that's a painful way to lo to lose a game, man. Let's see. L let me just yeah, go back rough. for a second and see if he had like literally any scans at all to deal with that. I don't think he did. He lifted off all of his CCs. Yeah, I don't think he could really have a. I don't think he can even fight without the vessel there. He had like one commsat, I think. Oh, did he lose control of this commsat, or did he use all the energy on it? Maybe, Maybe he, he didn't, didn't have it bound. Maybe he didn't have it bound. Oh no. Oh, that's so painful. He did have a ton of energy on this. He had he had four scans. He had four he's scanning scans. Scanning when that this one doesn't scan. Yeah, yeah. he's scanning he only with this. this he's only scanning with this one. He's got one scan left, and he uses it here at the end. And then he thinks that he has no scan. Now, there it is. Yeah, he used that last scan. Things. And with this getting uh, stasis, he thinks that he can't he can't fight this army anymore. But he could have fought this army. He could have gotten this base back online. Oh man, this is really painful. <laughs> Go back and find out that this comsat still had full energy. I mean, it wasn't. No, a... still, I think he loses, but yeah, he yeah, definitely. It wasn't a great fight, but I mean, we still got rallies. A lot of our stuff is in stasis. Yeah. If we come up he, here. He... Yeah, and actually the stasis units actually kind of body block a little bit. So if we did have all of our army here from the rally point, it's actually winnable, yeah. We could pull back. We could pull back these tanks. At least uh, hold this position for our rallies. Get this online. Oh man. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, Dragon played this out beautifully. You know, just constantly recalling on the expansions, making sure that he could never get a fourth base up. And we're basically completely mined out here from Nyokin. It was making a wraith at the end. What was that wraith for? I guess to pick off this uh, arbiter yeah. that was just parked and up the here, shuttle. just the there's shuttle no as well. Way of abusing the dead space up here, yeah, pretty much. Damn, man! Great game though, a great first game here between Naokin and Dragon. I hope that Naokin's not too tilted after that one. His first push out really got smashed. <clears throat> Hawk versus Dragon or our second match here it's gonna be dragon in the top right hawk in the bottom left his map choice dragon's map choice as the loser of the first match is going to be radion and i think this is a very well balanced map in terms of pvz Absolutely. don't you think i just like the map in general it's, just, it's a 14 base map which is unique usually you have like 12 or 16 and i like they took away the three and nine o'clock bases out from circuit breakers and now they've got the, the high ground 12 and six which make it like you know, really good for recalls and a little bit tricky to hold on to and you also got the dead space behind it as well which like you know we see like we saw in that tvp with an can just like hanging out there with shuttles and arbiters can be annoying and allow for some interesting creative play I really do like this map. It's so well balanced. You have the dead space at nine and three to make it even more balanced, hanging out over these third base naturals. So everything about this map is just ticking all the boxes for me so far. Yeah, not rotationally symmetric, but in the modern era, the map makers have a really good grasp on what makes a good map, and they they seem to be able to create just outside of the box maps that really do feel incredibly balanced so uh, i love to see this one i like that uh, dragon shows this map i wonder what his plan is here he's gonna start out with a forge first so doesn't want to play that early game back and forth instead he's more interested in just getting directly into his mid game and whatever plan he has going forward yeah i'm not too sure how popular cannon rushes are on this map but with this one drone hanging out down here, they'll he'll stop that. That's why we see this one drone just chilling right now. It's to stop the cannon rush potential, which is what Dragon wants to maybe go for it. There's the uh, cannon rush. Okay, so now he's going to come around here and be really annoying. The drone was there to stop this from going down, but wasn't able to get there and block the pylon being made. So going to try instead deal with this by making creep colonies or even drilling over the drones now over the minerals. Okay, you can just drill the probe over there, but you need more than one drone to fight this probe. Going to make an extra pylon here. Try and block the drones, and he actually does block this drone. It looks like that drone not going to be able to get over it. A lot of dancing here. He does have to eventually cancel this pylon. 
He's hoping that both drones will not end up on the right hand side or on the on the inside here. Oh, his probe going over the side. Ah, oh, that's really, really wow. rough. He does start the cannon. He's got two probes here. He needs to fight with both the probes if he wants to win. He's gonna be able to get he one of him. the drones, but good targeting here by Hawk, and Dragon just does not have it. Gonna get two drones wow. on top of this. He's gonna start another cannon over here. Two cannons, in fact, on the left hand side. But four Lings already in production. They're almost done as well. I think this is going to be an easy hold here for Hawk. Yeah, it's, it, 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 usually this would be a successful rush, but because of these four Lings being so early, there's no way these cannons will finish in time. And this cannon will just barely die as it warps in. Yeah, Ooh. really unfortunate for Dragon. The cannon rush just barely getting dealt with perfectly. Beautiful move commands by Hawk to stay on top of that pylon with those two drones the entire time. And then the beautiful target firing while the drones were stacked to still target fire that tiny little hitbox of the, the probe. It's actually a lot smaller than it looks. The shell of the probe isn't as big as you'd think. It's kind of like a small zergling and big big shell of armor and you have to click in the tiny little hull inside and beautiful target for you. you need like a few pixels that you could click on while all three were stacked mm -hmm. well this uh probe gonna come out and see quite a few lings coming across the map looks like uh hawk gonna turn and try to track that down he did build a significant number of lings here to deal with that he only needed about four i think but he really did pop out a huge amount just to make sure that that could be held. And he's going to go back into drone production now. He's building two hatches. One here at the natural. There's the one at the third. He has gas uh, finished, but hasn't started to mine it just yet. He's going to oh, go natural. to that now. Over here at the natural. Good pro blocking. And a zealot should be on the way here shortly. Uh, cannon, one cannon at the back. Good pulling back by Dragon. Second cannon will finish, and that's going to allow him to kind of rest here with the probes. Just one probe needed for that uh, blocking, and as soon as the Zealot is out, he can get fully back to mining it here in the natural. Very bad position for Dragon, though, overall. Look at how many drones have been able to be produced by Hawk. He's just got free reign over the map right now. Yeah, he can either choose to be aggressive here and turn this into like a four hatch hydra or he can be like super super passive and just go crazy on the amount of hatcheries and drones he makes right now he's got a lot of uh windows of opportunity to go for here and dragon has no map vision no probe scout no nothing he has no idea the, this corsair going across the map will be the earliest time that he'll have any clue of what's going on in this game so hawk hawk's range of play is almost endless right now limitless looks like he's gonna go into some sort of four hatch hydra here with a layer on the way i'm not sure exactly how all this lines up it's kind of a weird game already but you could basically do whatever you want as you as uh, shin said hawk has a world of possibilities and dragon has to account for a lot of different uh, you know cheeses or not cheeses but aggressive options here for uh, hawk and He's going to finally get this Corsair out, get that scout going, and kind of figure out what position he's actually in and what he needs to do to counter it. I think he might see that he's just kind of screwed. And this game, there's so many drones yeah. now. We're already at 30. He's going to keep on producing. Uh, he's going to get more hatches out here. We've got Hydralisk upgrades coming. He's going to have a few Hydras just to stop the Corsair from killing any Overlords. But beyond that, I don't think he's going to attack. He's just going to keep droning like a madman. Yeah, I had a lot of conversations with Hawk whenever we were in the same channel. We end up talking about um, Zerg tactics, and we talked about 4-Hatch Hydra at length quite a few times, I think. So I'd like to see him finally pull it out in a series. I've talked to him a lot about why it's good, and he agrees with some of the things I've said about it. And it's really nice to see him actually pull it out, because I think he's one of the better Zerg players in the foreigner scene that can actually make feels like this not only works strong but also has the the technical ability to turn it into a normal game as well like he doesn't have to commit to this like he did keep the options open but he's now just going to be making more hatcheries more evo chambers as well so has lined himself up for potential aggression but it's not going to commit to it we're going to be going into six hatch hydra we've got the minerals for it now does pop out a wave of hydralisk here there are five zealots to contend with so Having a big group of Hydra Ling is going to be really important right now. Plus one's not done. Plus, or the speed upgrade is not done either. We really haven't seen any overlords go down. No kills on either of these Corsairs. Dragon just finding himself completely 
uh, unable to do anything right now. And I think that's gonna that trend is gonna continue here with these zealots coming out. Hawk is just going to have overwhelming numbers of Hydras to deal with them. Yeah, and this is one of the advantages to like opening up with 4-Hatch Hydra is you don't actually have to attack. You can just like turn it into a macro game and just slowly pull up more and more units. And he's going to have like a, a at least a whole control group of Speedlings as well, which actually really helped trade. The, the Hydra Ling trades so nicely with the Zealots early game before they've got like a critical number and it stops them from being able to get on top of your clumps of Hydra as well. And he won't have Storm. Like look at this right now. St Templar Arcos is only just now finishing. So if, if Hawk wanted to, you could just be rallying across the map and putting on a lot of pressure pre-storm and just bust open his position you need four cannons and storm to defend this timing attack which is basically like a four hatch hydra but except he's got this macro behind it like hawk's doing a genius thing right now both having the timing of the four hatch hydra to bust dragon while also having the infrastructure behind it to turn into a normal game uh man i don't know dragon can hold on against this this is so much hydra he's gonna try to fly around and kill some uh, overlords during this but Overlord kills aren't what you need. You need Templar in this army to try and deal with it. The Speedlings are coming up and tanking a lot of this damage. The Cannons are mostly targeting them. The Zealots are mostly targeting them as well. He runs up here. The Zealots have to come out to fight once again, but two Cannons fall down almost instantly. Another Cannon going to go down here, and there's only one remaining. He jumps on top of that, finishes it off. The Probes are going to be pulled, but way too late. Hydra's taking this victory here. Hawk. 2-0 over Dragon in the winner's match. He's going to be sent to the next round here. He advances, and Dragon will have to duke it out in the decider match against the winner of Cross and Nyokin. I'm pretty impressed with Hawk. That was like one of the best four hatch charges I've seen. Yeah, he definitely has the, the skill to pull it off proving it there in that game and holding on against that uh cannon rush really really impressive stuff like the the way that he held that keeping the drones like active on top of the pylon if you let the drones slide off the pylon there and you know get outside of the uh the mineral patches then to just if there's just one drone on the other side the probe will kill it he'll stop uh, making the pylon, he'll make the cannon, he'll kill your drone, and then you'll be in a really bad spot with the second... With the second, um... Probe arriving to throw down more cannons. You know that that was just the plan there from Dragon. Choosing this map specifically for that... Uh, cannon rush. And Hawk just yeah, dealing that with it perfectly. Yeah, that pre-storm Hydra bus timing is just so potent in PvZ. You can't really do much about it if you get caught with your pants down like that. You need four cannons and storm to be able to hold that attack. And even then, they can just contain you and go turn into a lurker contain. So you're not even out of the woods, even if you have got those tools. Yeah, even if you did hold on against that, she's just got so much stuff. It's just he's, He just has way too much. Oh, it was really all down to that, that cannon rush, right? He wasted so much money. Mm -hmm. Trying to make that he happen. Gave him 45 seconds, basically. There was a, it, the, the storm timing was set back by at least 45 seconds. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he just had a bigger window to get even macro up even harder and go crazier. Um, looks like they played their match on retro, but that's the decider. The decider match should be on retro. Oh, they did the wrong map first. They did the wrong map first, yeah. All right, we'll have to uh, get the rulers out and spank some knuckles. <laughs> Slight mistake there, as you can see, the rules for this tournament. Citadel should be the map for the winners and losers match, and Retro should be the decider, but... Unfortunately, we've got a um, bit of a mistake here. It is the right replay with the right players. Cross versus... Nyokin. I'm gonna jump into this game. We'll just roll with the punches here, guys. Yeah, both players will have to get an NSM tattoo on their butt cheeks now as punishment. <laughs> All right. Cross here in the top left. 
Got Naokin down here in the bottom right. Bad. Bad Naokin. <laughs> yeah, we'll be uh, dealing with him shortly. Don't worry about that. You're you're a caster. Should know better than this. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> well, well, cross map. How do you feel about retro ZVT? I mean, I like it because I can do all kinds of crazy like Hydra Guardian and stuff on it. You know, you can mm. do some interesting stuff on this map. Mm -hmm. mm, for normal play, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I still feel it's, it's, it's pretty Zerg favored if uh, the Zerg's really good at their Defiler control. I, 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 also, go on. I honestly agree with you. Like the Hydra Guardian play on this map is great because this spot right here is perfect. Yeah, exactly. This yeah, exactly. is perfect. Like you fight, you fight. You build your guardians right here. They can't come out with their marines and, and contest it. And once your guardians spawn, you know, wherever your hydras are, you just bring them up and, and you take this fight. And you can keep overlords here too. Bunch of overlords here just in case they build um, uh, Cloak Wraith. You can bring them with your mm -hmm. army. It's just a really great map, yeah, for, for Hydra Guardian. But um, yeah, I don't know if that's in Crossy's wheelhouse, if that's something that he's looking to. Of course, he's a very cerebral Zerg. Like he, he's done some creative stuff. He's the guy that used to do the we well, did crazy Zerg. He'd make like two queens and get ensnare on the queens to like slow down the bio bus timing and stuff. Like he's a very creative kind of player. So I'm curious if we'll see any kind of a uh, glorious shenanigans out of him in this series, or if we'll just see some really nice straight up play. Like, he's looking like he's gonna go. Okay, so for a second there, I thought he was um, considering doing something absolutely crazy, but he's not. Uh, <laughs> for a moment there, I thought he was going to not get his gas and take a, an on-base third location hatchery and do something super crazy like you'd see on Neo Sylphid, but he's not doing that. I've actually experimented with that build quite a lot. Uh, it's pretty good on, on this map. You go for that 13 right. third base, build three uh -huh. sunkins here and two sunkins here. And yeah, you can get up viable, into right? Yeah, you can get up into a pretty decent Hydra Defiler count. Um, the Defiler can come out really quick. Uh, three base Muta is also amazing. Have uh, that really early third gas for a lot of Mutas early on and really pressure the Terran a lot and switch right into Hive and Hydra Defiler it out. It's it's pretty good on this map. It is pretty strong, but that's not what he's going to be doing. He did take the gas a little bit later, so we're probably going to see a pretty quick third hatch in main is what I'm expecting yeah. here. And that's just yeah. it's a pretty good build as well. The 2.5 hatch has been very popular for a while. Oh, oh, absolutely. You don't want to go three hatch because it just gives way too much control over to the Terran. They can literally do anything. Five racks plus one, any mm. kind of build under the sun. Like there's so many things. Like the range of play is endless for Terran. You don't want, do not want to give that much of a driver's seat to the Terran player. So 2.5 hatch is a great middle ground. Slightly delayed uh, muta timing, but you still got that kind of potency of having extra lava available to you early on. And we did also see the drone confirm the CC timing around about 2 minutes 50, which is indicative of 1 racks FE. Uh, as a Zerg player, you, you should know the timings of the CC relative to what build order they can do. And for example, if it's like a four, 3 minute 40 CC, then you know it's factory CC. And if it's like 3 minute 50, then you know it's like a factory starport CC. So uh, it's important to know exactly what the CC timings are so that when you do drone scout, you can try and like limit the range of play for the Terran as much as possible and, and also optimize your own build. Well... Build is being optimized here. Crossy has that third hatch. He's going to be able to pop out a lot of mutas. Getting his second gas up here. He hasn't had to build too many lings. Just putting out a couple on the map. I guess he built two pairs only. Has the good vision here over that opening. Has a second ling over here to make sure nothing sneaks out this direction. Make sure that he doesn't need any sunken colonies here and... Well, behind this wall, Naokin just going for that really quick plus one upgrade. He's mm -hmm. not going to have an extra barracks or anything for, you know, big two racks timing. Seeing the number of Marines here, you're not too scared as Cross either. Just ready to pump out a huge amount of Muta and then go for a third base. Maybe top right, maybe bottom left. We'll see. Well, plus one is becoming so much more popular in 2x these days, and in this situation it works out nicely because it's cross map anyway, so the, 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 the potential of killing him with two racks is so low, and mm. uh, there's very low chance it'll go for an on-base third uh, this early on. 
uh, with what he scouted. So he's pretty confident that he can just chill, go up to four racks and uh, do a nice, like, very standard SK Terran way of playing here. Uh, it, it seems that I think it's the response to the Crazy Zerg meta back in the day. Uh, we we went Crazy Zerg all the time, and now Terran's like, okay, I'm just going to get my plus one earlier, and I'm going to negate that big window where you've got 4 1 Ultras, and I'm just stuck with my bio that can't even kill your units. Hmm. Armor. Armor is on the Ooh. way right now, and the third base is at the 12 o'clock. This looks like a Guardian play to me now. Yeah. Yeah. This is like Hydra Guardian now. And with mm. the extra production as well, we'll have to be able to make a lot of units to back this up. It's going to be like a bit of mutiling into Hydra Guardian, I think. Four racks here for Nyokin. He's going to be spamming out Marines like crazy. And this can be a good way with the plus one and range. It's harder to fight with the Muta and harder to keep the Terran in their base, which is what you want to do with Hydra Guardian. You want to fight the Marines over and over. Try to force them back so that you can have that nice Guardian timing where you are morphing right out in front of their main. You can't... Or right out in front of their natural. You can uh, still morph Guardian here even if you don't manage to, uh, to you know, keep the Marines in there because... Even if the Marines are out on the map, you can still morph there, but it's just it's just worse. It's not as good. You really want to limit the Marine count. You want to keep fighting here. Lurker on the way. Okay, so he's going to go right into Lurker here. I guess this is going to be Defiler Hydra? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he might just be getting this Carapace, like, one to throw um, Nyokin off, but also maybe it's just his style choice. Like, maybe he prefers armor over attack upgrade. We shouldn't, like, read into that too much. Some Zergs do prefer armor, especially when they want to have their Scourge have more chance of connection connections with the specials later on. Having the armor makes the Scourge a little bit more tanky and don't die quite as quickly to those Gorse Rifles. Hmm. Well, he is fighting the Marines quite a lot. It's a little bit curious here. If you're going to be going for a later game play, usually you want to go after some SCVs. Try to slow down the Terran economy a bit, not really worry too much about the Marines, but he's really uh, taking it seriously, fighting these Marines. He hasn't managed to pick off any of them so far, which is pretty bad. The Nyokin's been able to keep these alive, and his Marine count has grown really, really large here. Queen's Nest on the way, and we're finally getting up to like a high count of... Muta, and there goes one dying to the uh, turret here. Not even a single Marine has gone down, I think, so far. And we've already right. lost some Mutas. A lot of these are low HP as well. This is not the, not looking too good for Cross so far. He is going to come in and start to get some shots off. He will have a pretty good group of Muta here, and he does have Lurkers on the way, so he should be able to defend. But Naokin's going to take full map control now. Yeah, but with the 4x, it does allow him just to come out onto the map. 3x is enough to kind of stabilize against the Mira production and deal with the control Oof. group of Mewers harassing you. But 4 does allow you to start to come out onto the map and challenge those Mewers and have a bit of map control yourself now. And this is where you want to park your Marines. It doesn't matter if you're being defensive or offensive. You want to keep your Marines out in a counter-attack position. So if the Mewers do decide to go into the main base and start harassing the SUVs, you can put a lot of pressure by walking across the map and maybe killing one of these third bases or at least pressuring the Zerg, maybe even killing the Zerg if he's too aggressive here. And one thing that Noka did really good in this early game was he was able to keep this zoning turret alive, but now he's being a little bit more careless with these Marines going out to the north with a small thresh, a small amount of him Marines to the northern threshold, just getting sniped without any kind of medic control. So he needs to be on top of those more, keep them in square formation against these mutilists and really start to babysit these units because otherwise you can lose them all. Finally, something going well here for Cross. Finding some of those Marines just kind of wandering forward here in Naokin. Oh, I heard a scan, but did he see the the whole position lurker that was just set up out here? I think he might have. There it is. He scans again. He sees it. He's going to take this fight. Ooh, not the greatest uh, spread there on the Marines. And he will actually have to back up. There's too many mutas here uh, for that assist. They're just going to back away from this spot. He's waiting for that plus one armor. Once he has plus one armor, it'll, th it'll take three shots, three volleys from the lurkers to actually kill those with just with plus zero attack so he's gonna spread these out even more here cross i mean he's putting on a lot of pressure right now but eventually we're gonna get into these vessels eventually we're gonna have plus one armor as well and things are gonna go a lot better for nyoka he should be able to easily break through this little mini containment here from cross you can see an armory being produced out of um uh, no, can hear. I wonder if we're going to get a few Valkyries or not. I'm curious why he's going Armory. Or if he's just thinking about maybe um, upgrades for later on. Maybe he wants to get a 
There's some going. I don't know. Actually, I'm curious why he's making this armory. I really want to know. Maybe he's maybe he's going Valkyries. I don't know. I'm a little bit curious about no, that. No, I think One he's. Thing... I think he's getting prepared for a later, like a, a big tank switch here soon. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. He wants to get uh, that, those upgrades going because he can see from his scans that this is going to be a big Hydra Defiler play. Right. And right. We do need to start putting down more factories. So probably another one, maybe two factories here at the front as he gets the third base online, the third gas, maybe over here. Then he'll be able to really start pumping out masses of tanks. He's already started the vulture production. He's starting to lay down these mines. They're very good at stopping cheeky little counter attacks with Lurker and Defiler making its way into your natural. So I like the mine placement here. I'd love to see mines over here as well because that is a pathway that Zerg can take down into your natural if you're not careful, if you're not prepared for that. It can really ruin your day. But we're going to start switching yeah. into tanks here soon. There yeah, a great response to this is basically three factory tank when you see Hydra Guardian. And he's doing a great job of scanning the entire game uh -huh. as well. Hydra Defiler. That makes sense. Go Hydra Defiler, sorry. Um, so going into um, the weapon upgrades does make sense this early on to keep up with the upgrade curve of the game. Uh, yeah, I, I still I still didn't like his bio control earlier on, but everything else he's done has been fantastic. Oh, losing that vessel is a little bit painful though. It does get the, the radiate on one of these defilers, and there's a nice little spore set up here to stop these uh, vessels coming in too close. But now the Marines can skirmish that down and pick that off and open up this position to lay siege once more. There is a defiler on his high ground to defend here, but there's only a couple, three lurkers on the right. Nyokin might decide to try and pick off this overlord, see if he can come in here, maybe sneak up on the left hand flank and pick off this Nidus. Oh, he is going to get the Nidus as well. That's really frustrating here for Cross. He's going to have to unburrow and reburrow these Lurkers here a little bit closer, but the armor is really helping them out a lot. We don't have that plus one done yet, and he's going to get up here, kill a few more drones too, making things really hard right now for Cross. He will run away with this uh, Science Vessel as well. That's a big part of taking fights with this early army finally does clean that up you really want to pick off these vessels man the vessels you yeah. can't allow them to just come in irradiate a bunch of stuff all the army dies and they just escape it's it's too painful setting saying, up what we've got hmm? saying, while we've got a quick moment have you have you heard the weird trick with the weird um, fact with the lurkers if they die with that as they shoot their last subterranean spine it does double, double damage. damage yeah yeah that's crazy right? i'm sure there's a lot of people watching that aren't aware of that there's a weird thing in starcraft where if the lurker dies as it shoots it does double damage, so it can actually one-shot Marines. That's why sometimes you'll see fights where all of a sudden Marines will just blow apart. That's because the Lurker died as it did its attack, and that actually does double damage. It's an interesting little fact about the game, not, not commonly known. Yeah, that's a, that's a weird little quirk. I'm not sure that was intentional, but here we go. See a Defiler making its way over here to the natural. The mines doing their job. A great plague there, actually clearing up all of these Marines. Oh, man, that plague absolutely wrecking there and he will come forward with the vultures to be able to clear out this defiler and the lurker but that was a lot of lost marines and he's switching fully into mech here so he just lost basically all the last of his marines he really doesn't have any more left now just a couple over here maybe a few on this high ground here but that is it he needs to smoothly transition right now into the tanks and cross is putting on the hurt to him right now. He's really attacking into him kind of aggressively at the moment. You see all these barracks Whoa. floating are actually buying some time, and the Marines are going to come down to try and slow things a little bit, but he has to spread tanks here. He has to get this base online right now, and Cross is going to try and break him. Yeah, well, Crossy has like four gases going for him right now. That's 1,200 gas a minute. That's a lot of units he's able to produce. And with these Nidus canals, it's going to be really difficult to come down here and really do much damage to harass them as well. And because he's doing this big mech switch, he can't even afford to commit any units to the map to really do any kind of counter attack. And so it's just a game of stabilization for the Terran player right now. Try and keep this third base safe. Eventually, he's going to want to take his fourth. And he's just going to churn out a huge, massive amount of tanks that'll eventually be too difficult for Crossy to break into because even under the swarm, there'll be so many tank shooters that the swarm won't even really help anymore. But now he's going to come to this third base location at the vehicle. A small little uh, contingency of Hydras and the uh, Defiler here. Maybe see if he can get something done. But I don't think he's going to be able to get much besides like frustrating Nogin with a little Dark Swarm on the ramp here. But eventually he's going to start to try and get as many trades with these tanks as he can. Try and whittle down the count of Nogin. But Nogin's doing a very good job of just keeping everything tight right now. Not letting any units bleed off unnecessarily. It's going to get tanks on the high ground here to deal with these Hydras that are being so pesky under that Dark Swarm tanks over here. Defending the natural, defending the third base. It's like Hydra trying to come over 
Just testing the waters here, making sure that there are enough tanks in every location defending here. Then managing to hold off. There's some more mines going down. Another group of Hydra Lurker coming down on this right-hand side as Cross. I mean, he's got this gas online down here at the bottom left. It's not very well defended, but just Nyokin completely on the back foot here trying to hold on. He doesn't really have any thoughts in his head, I think, right now of actually going out with some Vulture and, and harassing a base like that. And that's really giving Cross a lot of momentum here. Not having to deal with any uh, defense right now is really, really good for him. He's just purely on the attack and we're running out of irradiates right now. Tanks are dealing their damage, but we have another Defiler coming up. He's going to drop another Dark Swarm. That tank is going to go down and we're just about broken here over at the third base. More tanks are going to finally come up as that one tank dies. Now he actually should hop underneath the Dark Swarm. He doesn't. And so this tank will just die, unfortunately. Two tanks more going down. And the uh, mines are not going to be able to connect. GG. Oh. A painful oh. loss here. And Naoka just getting overwhelmed before he could get this mech online. Yeah, just creating a few cracks in the Terran armor. And then just ripping him open. And tearing that little Terran out of his hull. And uh, unfortunately, the exoskeleton is not going to be able to keep him safe. Yeah, this is, this is rough. You know, this is... We should really go back to that point where... Nyokin was attacking here into the natural and he ran up here into this third base. It looked like a really good move at the time, but having all of those units die right as he was transitioning into mech means he didn't have like bio forces sitting out in front of the uh, Zerg base so that he could get mines really far out on the map. And that meant that there was big holes in his defense where Crossy could exploit he could send army across the map without dealing with a bunch of mines, you know, picking up a bunch of them off and was able to get up here and stop this third base from really getting online. And man, a great game here from Cross. A few small mistakes from Naokin, and we're going to jump into game number two. It's too scary. We'll save right. it for the ladies. We can't do blue versus blue, can we? Oh my gosh. There's no options. We're blue versus blue. Light blue versus light blue versus dark blue. Nice, I this, like it, Sam. This is gonna be fun. Or yellow versus yeah. yellow. What do you prefer? Yellow versus yellow? Hell no. No, no. We'll do <laughs> blue. Blue, blue, please. Yeah. All Especially right. with Protoss. Yellow and yellow for Protoss is so bad. Okay. Blue versus blue. It is dragon here in the top left. Cross in the bottom right. I guess we're playing. On, is it because blue. we're playing on melee or something like that? Is that the reason Probably. why? Why it's yellow versus yellow? Yeah, I mean, you play on top versus bottom, it makes it nicer for the casters with the shift tab function, making it red versus blue, but a lot of people don't. It's just like throw it on melee and then you know, roll the dice. They both pick random colors and they're playing on shift tab anyway, so they don't care. But we care. We're the casters. We care. At least pick a color, guys. Have a bit of like, you know, flair, you know, pick your own color and stick with it. Some guys pick magenta all the time. Some guys pick blue all the time. Just pick, pick a color, you know, have a little personality to your play. Yeah, come on. This is a tournament. It's a tournament, guys. This is going to be cast. It's going to be shown to an audience. Pick a color. Pick a lane. Stick with it. Well, pick it and hold it. We've got a 12 hatch here coming out from Cross. Going to throw that down and send out the drone at the same time to try to find out some information as to what's the plan here for Dragon. And Dragon, he's saving up quite a bit of money. He's going to start a... Forge now. Well, it is yeah. a little bit later than you know normal, and he will be getting a nexus, I think, before oh. cannon. Well, this this is this makes it so it's harder to do things like cannon rushes, but it actually optimizes your minerals more because the probe doesn't have to come down so early to build the forge from mm. the main, and you already sent out the early probe scout, so it optimizes minerals, and you don't need the forge that early to hold a nine pull anyway. Mm. So he's happy to. Most pros players are happy to delay the forge like this to optimize minerals. They might lose this probe. Needs to be careful. Nice control there from Crossy with beautiful chase marker and manual move commands on the hex grid as well. Trying to catch up to that probe, going to force it back into the main base, but does keep it alive for the time being. Now we're going to see Dragon throwing down his Nexus and then the cannon. Very optimized early game from him. Yeah, I should have that cannon coming up here pretty soon. Still hasn't seen the pool finish, so no need for the cannon just yet. Mm -hmm. He's actually probably going to get the gateway here yep. first. He can get away with it. A bit extra well. greed here from Dragon is going to give him 
a faster Corsair timing with that gateway yeah. finishing up and you know, he'll be able to get the gas, he'll be able to get the Cybernet score. He doesn't have anything here in the natural to actually build the cannon. He's going to send that probe back down, finally start that cannon. He's checking to make sure that there are no uh, eggs hatching here just yet, no lings popping out. And I think he's he's maneuvered this early game pretty much perfectly. Yeah, and for the guys in the chat, basically, as long as the cannon starts as the lings are coming out of the eggs, you're safe. So as long as he's got these cannons started before those lings were hatching, he knows he's fine. And even if it wasn't, it was slightly delayed. You can pro block with a few probes to slow down those lings and prevent a run by. So he's super safe right now, even though he's, it seems like he's being greedy. He It's very calculated greed, which is why scouting is so important in PvZ. You want to get away with the bare minimum in StarCraft, and you're always like walking that tightrope of making the bare minimum units to survive while also trying to be as greedy in either your economy or your attack to try and get ahead in the curve only building two lings here cross being a little greedy as well and getting his drones out as quickly as is possible as speed on the way with that layer layer here in the natural to kind of try and throw off the timings a little bit of dragon dragon hasn't checked the layer just or ch checked the natural just yet looks like he's gonna try and get down there now Damn, that probe taking a lot of damage and still managing to get out with one HP. And that thing has been on low health since the very beginnings of this game. And he's going to take another shot. There we go. Finally takes that out. But getting a full view of everything coming here from Cross. I think the dragon's going to be really feeling his position here. He should be able to get that uh, Corsair out in really good time here. Uh, at least to pick off a couple of overlords before the Aspire comes online, I think. Yeah, it's a super early Stargate. So he, at the very least, has the potential to kill two overlords before anything can stop the Corsair. The issue is, is finding the overlord. So if Crossy's a little bit clever here, he can put his overlords in slightly awkward positions. But right now we see those out trying to come in here, see if he can like, maybe maybe get a drone, but he's not going to be able to get behind the minerals. Crossy's on top of everything right now. Beautiful Ling blocking that. So now that there's out behind the minerals, just one Ling will finish it off. So really cost efficient. Uh, dealing of the early pressure from that Zealot Dragon, not finding anything for his effort. And Crossy's finding himself a nice little mid-game state here, but the issue is this one Corsair that's going to be super early. So as long as he can keep his overlord safe enough that he doesn't get supply blocked, I think he's going to be in good shape. Yeah, I think he should be all right going forward here. Does need to start an extra overlord or two just in case those uh, overlords fall. He wants to keep his drone production high right now. There's not really any pressure coming out of Dragon at the moment, so... Full on drone production here. Hatchery is going to be popping out as well. Cross has an overlord coming, but look at how early this Corsair is. Hitting about 5 minute 30, actually, that just popped out. So not the the earliest, actually. Not not super, super early. About 5 minute 30 is when you expect that first Corsair to hit the, hit the field. And he's actually not going to find these early overlords. He's going to come across the map and see the hatcheries being thrown down he's going to check the main base and he sees that there's already a spire so rule of thumb is if the spire is done when the corsair starts to hit the oh my god the scourge popping out right there and he's almost going to lose this corsair but he should be able to make it back home now i don't think there's any way that the scourge can catch but the rule of thumb is if the spire is done you cannot kill an overlord if you haven't already started hitting it so he is going to head all the way back home with no overlord kills from this early uh, Corsair play. Yeah, the only thing he really does is he gets to confirm the tech and all the timings and just manages to get back with the life of the Corsair. So going for the early Corsair means the Corsair survives. So it's that 100 gas is a, a safe investment rather than a risky investment because sometimes that first Corsair can get sniped by a very early Spire timing. Uh, even with Mutalisk, sometimes they go two hatch Muta and the Corsair arrives just as the Mutalisk pop out and they can just get on top of the Corsair. So he might get the snipe on this Corsair, needs to get on the escape vector. Beautiful move command so far from this Corsair, trying to sneak out. There's no cannon finish it in the main base, so this Corsair is kind of isolated into the corner. Does manage to try and get an escape vector on the southern threshold, not able to achieve it. Does now try to get the transition into the natural Ooh. expansion, finally able to get to the safety of the natural and the cannon. So a yeah, little, little moment there of uh, hostility. For, um, dragon to contest with but manages to walk that tightrope with some majestic balance that was really really close there keeping that corsair alive very very important being a little greedy not building that cannon right away not uh you know having a safety uh, spot here in the main base to to avoid these uh, scourge and 
Now that's a lot of Hydras being pump pumped out by Cross. He's not really going into that meta play, realizing that this is a pretty dedicated um, Corsair play coming out of Dragon. He's going to have a lot of Corsairs to work with, but he's not going to have too much of a ground army, and Cross is just going to overwhelm this ground army. He's going to push all of this back with uh, huge amounts of Hydras coming forward here. He hasn't thrown down a sixth hatchery just yet, but I imagine that'll be on the way soon here with more drones hitting the field. He's going to need that extra production. Yeah, though there's two schools two schools of thought. You can either go six hatchery pure hydra, or you can stay five hatchery and go straight into lurkers. That is an option. If he does want to get his third gas really quickly and go pure lurker, that is an option to him. But he may still want to just go for the hatchery anyway. Um, pure hydra is kind of the meta right now. Battlezerg is strong, but you need the kind of extra production to keep up with Protoss players. They're so much better at doing these mid-game timing pushes that you need that little extra push with the Hydras to deal with the amount of storms that they can leverage against you and how efficient they are in controlling their armies. Losing a few Corsair here, not the best. Throwing a few Hydra away as well is a little bit rough. Dragon, I think, gonna try and just come up here with the first couple of Templar and hold his uh, third base. It's very, very hard to break a third base here from the Protoss player. Once they get on high ground with Storm, it's almost impossible. So, Cross getting ahead of this. He's getting his Hydras here on this high ground and preventing the Zealots from making their way up there. Dragon going to be forced to go for a counterattack. And there's already Hydras all over the place picking off these Corsairs here. Has a good defensive position on the high ground. There's the sixth hatch. There's the second, uh, oh, the, the third gas, excuse me. Plus two upgrade is coming here. Cross is ready for a big transition into Lurker. And I don't know if Dragon's going to be ready to handle that. But he is going to come around and loop around Ooh. this army. He's going to hit it from both sides. Completely crushing this Hydralis force. Oh, this is a huge pickup for Dragon. This is exactly what he needs to get a nice foothold in this game. There's a nice big swarm of Zerg coming around the map right now to try and secure this 12 o'clock once again. But dealing with that so cost efficiency is a nice for him. Nice for him. And now he can get on top of the ramp and prevent these Hydras getting up here. He can start to make some Lurker eggs to frustrate these positions and use those Lurker eggs to buffer against the Zealots Templar. and prevent any surface area. Right now the Templar the Templar, are, they can't get out. Get over there. They can't get out. They... He needs to get these Templar over to this 12 o'clock position. Now the Zealots are actually boxed in. He can make a Lurker egg on the ramp. And now the, the Zealots are contained. Look at this beautiful setup here from Crossy, utilizing those Lurk Rakes like I was talking about to deny any surface area or cost efficiency to those Zealots trading really nicely. Now, using the Dark Templar, though, going to be taking out the egg on that ramp, getting some of the unit flow again, but there's no High Templars over here to help out. He's going to deny this expansion going up and start a Lurk contained from this high ground in the 12. He's going to have to kill his own cannons just to get these Templars out. He can't get his Templars out. He has to... This is a real cost, a real big, big costly error here for Dragon not being able to um, get out because of the Sim City, and now he's going to lose the opportunity to secure this third base and it's going to get contained here oh no this is th not like this guys not like this the templar could have made their way over here they would have had amazing storm potential at this ramp he should have been able to secure this third base with the number of units he'd gotten and the great trade when he managed to trap this but cross got up here he took amazing advantage of the lack of templar and storm on this high ground by placing the egg there and trapping the entirety of the army now dragon in such a bad position a full 10 supply in the deficit right now and hydras are going to run forward here try to snipe a templar they get one already that is brutal it was the templar that cast its storm so we've still got plenty of storm here we've got lots of energy on these but Cross is just sharking around the outside of this army, looking for any opportunities to snipe these down. And there's lurkers on high ground here right now. Cross is in such a good spot. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and he's doing it with such few units. This is just three lurkers and like six hydra up on his high ground. He kills the observer as well. This is crazy efficiency for Crossy. This is like the worst nightmare situation to be in as a Protoss player. Like, it's really frustrating to have to deal with this. You're waiting for more observers to finish before you can even do anything. And if you do storm these lurkers one at a time, you don't have enough storms left over to fight this huge hydra force that Crossy's fielding right now. He's going to go into taking a fourth base soon and just explode out onto the map like a virus if Dragon can't get 
a foothold here. He's going to try and come out here with this second observer. There is only four lurkers up here. And a nice storm tries to get two for one, but he actually doesn't get the connection on the bottom right lurker. So only killing one of those lurkers. Now going to start the storm on the other one, soften those up. With a storm, though, he does soften up the lurkers enough for the dragoons to start taking them out with just a few phase disruptor shots. So he can start to open up this position. But with this low ground, it's really difficult to come up here and get the, the kind of the movement control that he needs to actually get some good connections. He has another observer, but he keeps losing them over and over again. If he could lose another observer, what is Dragon doing right now? He's just kind of on autopilot mode in frustration, trying to break out from this position. And because he's not being tentative enough and methodical with his uh, methods, he's actually just getting punished by Crossy, who's being much more cerebral and thinking tactfully here. Yeah, he's killing these observers over and over and over again. There's one more. We've got one observer here. If he loses this, he might just have to tap out because there's no way of escaping this chokehold that Cross has on him. He will start to break through the lurkers here on the left-hand side. He's starting to break out of his natural, but Hydras are coming up in big numbers. We don't have the storm. Where's the storm for all the Hydras here? He does have that storm finally, but a lot of Dragoons have been lost. The potency has really been ripped away from this army. And without too many Templar here, it's going to be so difficult to actually come out and fight against so this massive group of Hydras in a big open field. Yes, yeah, pure battle Zerg mode for uh, Crossy right now. Just trying to field as many Lurkers and Hydras as physically possible. With the Dragoons at a low number, you can just target fire those down one at a time. Even two Storms would not be enough to win this fight for him. It's looking like the writing's on the wall for Dragon. He's not going to get his gold this time. GG called. Wow, Crossy in full control of this matchup so far, taking game number one. Whoa, the upgrades even being ahead here. Crossy ahead in every single way. And it really came down to this fight here on this high ground. So sad. You really saw, you saw Dragon trying to pull his Templar over here, and they're just dancing around in the natural. That's the nature of Brood War, though. If you pox yourself in like that, if you don't remember to open up your entrance, uh, your units will just get stuck, and you can potentially lose the game. And I hope that Dragon manages to fix some of those mistakes, some of those errors here in game number two we're gonna jump right into that he might be tilted though at this point wouldn't you be shun i would be very frustrated yeah yeah uh, that's uh, that's a frustrating loss man a real frustrating loss but a great game and a great uh advantage being taken by crossy from those mistakes and that's it that's that's brood war in a nutshell your opponent is gonna make mistakes you're gonna make mistakes it's whoever takes mm -hmm. the best advantage of the mistakes made by the other player who makes the least mistakes those are the things that are going to win you games in Brood War. And we're going to jump into game number two here, guys. It's going to be on Radeon. I, and no, I don't think he would have seen the, the replay from Dragon and, and Hawk. He wouldn't have seen yeah, but it. it yeah, but most high-level Zergs are going to have that drone waiting there if it's 12 mm. hatch. It, it's, it's just a standard thing to do to prevent counter rush. Right. It is a new map. He might not be aware of the potential here. Maybe Dragon going to be relying on that. Let's see what his timing is for the forge this time. I felt like he had a really good opening build in the last game and it yeah. just doesn't it doesn't matter though if you don't have your templar when you need them to be there. Yeah, I mean it... <laughs> It's crazy because he probably thought that the Sim City wouldn't block it, but the way the cannon was aligned to the rest of the wall just made it so that the, the, there was no hole for the Templar to squeeze through. It is two cannons side by side. The, the Templar can fit through, but not when it's up against the other wall buildings like it was in that very neat, very nuanced situation. Mm. And that kind of like caught Dragon unawares and everything fell apart after that. I imagine he was so frustrated he couldn't even keep his head together to formulate a defense there. Yeah, and then of course the snipes and the observers just further frustrating dragon and he hasn't thrown down the forge just yet he's gonna get in here and see that it is an over pool so no 12 hatch here it's not gonna be viable to go for a cannon rush so unfortunately we're not gonna get to see that this time no um yeah i don't i i kind of would like to see him just throw down the uh the the same thing we did last time do the delayed forge delayed nexus and try and squeeze out a little bit of a early eco here but especially against the overpool opening from crossy but me personally i much prefer going overpool against protoss generally speaking so i don't have to worry about doing things like cannon rush defense but i guess it's if you are good at doing those kind of like early game maneuvers it is way more advantageous to have that in your range of play 
Wow, Look Cross is so aggressive with the first drone. He really wants to wow. get rid of the probe. And Look he's doing that. a great job of it. Wow, he manages to pick that off. That's another tilter right there, I think. <laughs> that's that's yep. another thing yep. that's going to kind of throw you for a loop here is Dragon building two cannons back at home. Is this an overreaction or is this necessary? No, necessary. With these six links, so it's necessary. Six links coming here. He's going to block just slightly with the probe, slowing this down just a couple of seconds is really important. We should have a gateway built here in the front, I think. Or is he just going to wait for this Nexus? Looks like waiting for the Nexus instead with the two cannons. He should be 100% safe to this cross. He's going to realize that and throw down his third base and just keep his links out in front here. But the whole purpose of what Crossy's done here is to deny, to deny scouting. Like, mm. the whole purpose of going these early six links isn't to kill Dragon, it's to force cannons and then deny scouting. That's why he was so adamant on killing that probe with that drone, because he wants to make sure Dragon just can't see anything in this. And once it's lights out for Dragon, he won't be able to navigate into a cost efficient, a minimal, minimal optimized or min max build that he needs to fight someone of Crossy's caliber. Trying to juke and jive here. Try to get out on the map with this one pro, but Cross just not letting it happen. Ooh. There he manages to slip by. Wow. There we go. Getting a probe on the map is so important right now. Like you said, denying scouting is the name of the game right here for Cross. And he's going to even pull a drone to try and block this. Really <gasps> nice blocking. He might get the moving shot now. Moving shot, finishing wow. off that probe. Really well done here. Crossy displaying some incredible early game micro. Yeah, this is really exceptional stuff from Crossy. Really high level stuff. Now he has the option to just go straight into lair. So he can do free base spire if he wanted link to. Link speed. Uh, or he can do link speed. Yeah, that's another option. Or he could go hydro dead. There's so many things that he can do now that Dragon just has no idea about. And Dragon's going to be scratching his head thinking, do I make two cannons? Do I make three cannons? Do I make? Four? Do I just make gateways? Do I get a Stargate? Like, not really anything is a great option for him here because he wants to get a Stargate out right away get a scouting going so he actually knows what he's dealing with but by, by the time he discovers what he's dealing with it might not be optimized he might just die to a hydroling all in yeah he it's really tempting to send this zealot out on the map and try to get some information maybe that would be the plan that would be the right choice right now just send the zealot out try to run by the lings try to you know skirmish with them find out what's coming here but that's a lot of links coming up right now if he heads out with the zealots the zealots could just get surrounded and killed and then he won't have any information about the Hydras that are on their way. And yeah, he's going to try to get this info by fighting with the Zealots. And he's just going to see more and more links coming across the map. They're going to get completely surrounded and killed. There it is. Dragon, what is his response? Mass cannon? We need oh, a bunch of cannons right now. Well, there's one thing you could do as Protoss where you like kind of hedge your bets, where you like start a third cannon, you wait for it to finish like 99, and then you cancel it if you don't think you need it. But mm. even that's not good here. Like you're still wasting a lot of money, and like you might even make the wrong decision and cancel it when you need it, or not cancel it when you need to cancel it. So there's not real right answer here for Dragon. I mean, right now what he does need to do is make a third cannon, but he doesn't know that for sure. He didn't mm. see the link speed though, so it should tip him off that it's maybe some kind of like Hydra play. It's but it's a very strong possibility of being a Hydra play, so he should be considering a third cannon at this point uh, when you see link speed you usually don't think 973 right 973 but, is a very tight build you need all the gas that you can muster to get those hydras out to get all the hydra upgrades as well but that, yeah he's just building a lot of links behind this this is the newer that, style of 973 yeah this is the nine this is the newer style where you only get one upgrade either range only or speed oh, wow. only in this case speed only is not actually uh, required so he just needs the range to help bust open this like awkward vertical expansion area so he's gonna have a big flood of links to soak up the zealots now the hydras move up right up to the gateway with move command just like six or seven hydras enough to gun down the first two cannons he did a third cannon finish have any chance of hold of this and a pro pool not gonna have either of those things and look at this cross he's just gonna be picking up an easy win here wow that was really well done that's not easy to do without a uh, range to run up right up to next to the gateway and snipe down both those cannons. He didn't he have range, range, did he? Uh, he had he range, just speed. had range, no speed. Okay. If it, if it was a horizontal expansion with the cannons on the right or left, then he would have been speed only. But because it was a, a vertical entrance, he went range only instead. Gotcha. And just the speedling flood behind this. I haven't really seen this 9 2 1. But it worked out beautifully here for Cross. A really tight build here with all of the scouting denial that he did. 
and the you know the the pick off with the drone multiple times killing the probe stomping all of the information and then going for this build this is this is very crisp i like this a lot dragon really didn't see it coming and he gets completely smoked here and yeah that's it man he's out cross just like that just like that he's gonna advance